Welcome to Pre-Math. In this video tutorial, we have got two identical circles with radius 8 that intersect each other at two distinct points, these one, two points, as you can see in this figure. And now we are going to calculate the area of this red square C, D, E, F. So let's go ahead and get started with the solution. And here's our very first step. Let's go ahead and connect points A and B. These points, we are going to connect these points and connect point B and C as well. And here's our much nicer looking diagram. And also you can see that this point A is the center of this left hand side circle, whereas this point B is the center for the right hand side circle so therefore this a b line segment is a radius and radius we know is eight units and likewise this b c is going to be radius again and it is eight units so therefore i wrote down a b equals to eight and b c equal to eight as well and now let's observe that the line segment a b divides the chord c f into two equal parts according to chord of a circle theorem. According to this theorem, a radius or a diameter perpendicular to a chord divides the chord into two equal parts, as you can see in this figure. So therefore, this chord CF is being divided into two equal parts. So therefore, this CP equal to PF. And moreover, this line segment, this tiny line segment AP and this tiny line segment TB, they are equal because of this symmetric property. And here's our next step. Let me go ahead and call this the side length of this square as 2x. This side is 2x, this side is 2x, this side is 2x and we know that this side is 2x as well and since this has been divided into two equal parts so I'm going to call this side x this cpx and this pf is x as well and now let's focus on this rectangle cdtp and here's the definition of a rectangle. It has four angles, each measuring 90 degrees. The opposite sides of a rectangle have same length and are parallel. So therefore, this line segment CD is equal in length with this line segment PT. So therefore, this line segment PT equals to 2x, this one. And now let's observe one more thing. This line segment, this big line segment AB equals to this part AP plus this PT, this one, and plus TB. And we know that this AB equals to 8. Let's go ahead and fill in the blanks. Replace AB by 8. And in our case, AP is equal to TB, isn't it? So I'm going to replace this AP is same as TB plus PT in our case is 2X plus TB. Let's go ahead and add them up. 8 equals to 2TB plus 2X. Let me go ahead and divide across the board by 2 to make things simple. So that is going to give us 4 equal to this 2 and 2 is gone. So TB plus X. So that means TB is going to be simply 4 minus X. And let's observe finally one more thing. PB equals to PT plus TB. So PB equal to pt in our case is 2x and plus tb we know equals to 4 minus x let me go ahead and just simplify that thing so pb turns out to be simply 
x plus 4. So just keep in your mind. And here's our next step. Let's focus on this triangle BPC and its side CP is x, PB is x plus 4 and BC is 8 as a radius. Since this is a right triangle, so therefore we are going to use the Pythagorean theorem. And here's the Pythagorean theorem, a square plus b square equal to c square. And in our this triangle, BPC, the longest leg is, this is C, this horizontal side I'm going to call A, and this vertical side is B. And here's our Pythagorean formula. Let's go ahead and fill in the blanks. In our case, A equals to x plus 4, B equal to x, C equals to 8. Let's go ahead and fill this one out. So it's going to become x plus 4 square plus x square equal to 8 square. And now we are going to expand this binomial by using this formula a plus b square. So that is going to give us x square plus 8x plus 16 plus x square equals to 64. And now if we move this 64 on the left hand side we can simplify as 2x squared plus 8x minus 48 equal to 0. Let's divide each and every term across the board by 2 to make things simple. So this turns out to be x squared plus 4x minus 24 equal to 0. And now this turns out to be a quadratic equation and we are going to solve it by using a quadratic formula. And here's the well-known quadratic formula that we will be using to solve our this quadratic equation. And here's quadratic formula. Let's go ahead and fill in the blanks. So x equal to b in our case is 4. So this becomes negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 4 square minus 4 times a is 1 times c is negative 24 divided by 2 times a is 1. So that's going to give us simply negative 4 plus or minus 16 plus 96 divided by 2. And here after simplification we got negative 4 plus minus square root of 112 divided by 2 and here I copied down square root of 112 over here. Now we can see that this square root of 112 could be simplified as 4 times square root of 7. Let me just go ahead and write it down negative 4 plus or minus 4 times square root of 7 divided by 2. I can just simply split this one up like this one. And now this could be simplified as I can write x equal to negative 2 plus or minus 2 times square root of 7. So this is our x value. So thus our x value turns out to be negative 2 plus or minus 2 times square root of 7. And here we are going to split this one up. We're going to separate them along with these signs. And here we got two x values, one with the positive sign, the other one with the negative sign. And now we are going to reject this x equal to negative 2 minus square root of 7 since this represents a negative value and we know that x is a distance so distance cannot be negative so no wonder we're going to reject this value. So therefore we are going to accept this value which represents a positive value. And here is our final step. We figured out x equal to negative 2 plus 2 times square root of 7. So which could be written as 2 if we factor it out becomes square root of 7 minus 1. So this is x value. And we know that the side length of this square is 2x. So I can just simply write 2 times and x is this value. So I can write times 2 times square root of 7 minus 
1. So side length turns out to be 4 times square root of 7 minus 1. Now let's calculate the area of this red square. And here's the area of a square formula, a equal to s square, where s represents the side. So I can just simply write down a, and our side is 4 times square root of 7 minus 1, and then square. So that is going to give us 4 square is 16 times square root of 7 minus 1 square, which is area. And now let's focus on this part, square part. I just copy it down over here. This square could be written as square root of 7 minus 1 times square root of 7 minus 1. Let's do the double distribution to take care of that one. We're going to file it, okay? Like this one. So that is going to give us square root of 7 times square root of 7 minus square root of 7 minus square root of 7 once again plus 1 this square root of 7 times square root of 7 is going to give us 7 here we're going to combine this thing that's going to give us negative 2 times square root of 7 plus 1 that means our disk is going to give us 8 minus 2 square root of 7 so now i am going to replace this value over here so that's going to be 16 times 8 minus 2 times square root of 7 or simply a is going to be if we distribute this thing that's going to give us 128 minus 32 square root of 7 thus the area of this our red square turns out to be 128 minus 32 times square root of 7 we know that the square root of 7 is approximately equal to 2.646 if we replace over here so our area turns out to be approximately equal to 43.34 square units and that's our final answer thanks for watching and please don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more exciting videos bye